Coming up on this edition of Carolina Insider, the recently suspended Lambda Chi fraternity is facing even more controversy in their own front yard. Recent developments in a Columbia area are giving one historic district a brand new image. But first, candidates traveling through Columbia have certain voters in mind this campaign season. Carolina Insider starts now. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Lauren Thomas. Our top story today, a new poll shows former Vice President Joe Biden is running away with the South Carolina Democratic primary at this point in the campaign. Even though Biden is losing traction in some states, the Quinnipiac poll shows him with a 20-point lead among likely Democratic primary voters in the Palmetto State. Even though Biden has a strong hold on the state, other Democratic candidates are working hard to eat into that lead. Here now with today's Pure Politics is Emma Mondo. Emma? Thanks, Lauren. Kamala Harris is in town this weekend, going after the most sought-after voter demographic here in South Carolina. From college campuses to rural communities, she and others are vying for the attention among African-American voters. Biden has strong support among black voters, a key to winning America's first primary. Political science professor Dr. Robert Oldendick says that this trend is not expected to change next year. Is it? is a very different kind of electorate. The South Carolina electorate for the Democratic primary, we anticipate is probably going to be close to 60% African American. Harris is the next candidate to come to the Palmetto State, teaming up with Higher Heights, an organization meant to support the election of black women into office. That's in Charleston on Saturday. Back to you, Lauren. Thanks, Emma. Back on campus, the recently suspended Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity is facing even more scrutiny after heckling a news reporter. After the frat suspension last week, members could be heard yelling at Watch Fox reporter Brittany Breeding with sexually charged comments while she was reporting in front of their house in Greek Village. The incident is sparking debate on whether or not the individual students should be punished. In Breeding's statement, she says, while it was happening, it didn't really hurt my feelings or anything. It just more so frustrated me because I was just there trying to do my job. In any other job, what they did would be unthinkable. Finally, today, the Bull Street District is already home for office buildings, restaurants, and baseball. As Leah Kazmarak found out, some of the older landmarks in the area will be getting a makeover in the future. Columbia residents have been seeing major changes in the Bull Street District in recent years. With restaurants, office space, and the home of the Columbia Fireflies, Sagra Park, the project has seen lots of progress so far. Hughes Development of Greenville took on the project in 2010. Continuing to add to our infrastructure um, as the project grows and making sure that we are continuing to connect to the city of Columbia, really reintegrating the 181 acre district back into um, back into the fabric of the city. In partnership with Clacken Properties, the Babcock Building, named on South Carolina's historic registry, will soon be renovated into apartments. What you may not know is that the campus was originally opened in 1821 as the South Carolina Lunatic Asylum, one of the first public mental hospitals in the nation. At one time, uh, the whole campus there on Bull Street was really a self-sufficient town. There was a dairy, an ice cream factory, a fire station, a laundromat, and all kind of things right there on the campus. Lawrence Haynes reflects on his time working at the Bull Street Mental Hospital. He discusses how much of an innovator South Carolina was in the movement to help the mentally ill in the 1970s. It was kind of the miracle of people who had been hospitalized for 10, 20, 30 years, uh, coming out and seeing the sunlight and seeing how the world had changed and doing things like ordinary citizens without mental illness were doing. So there, there was a lot of, uh, of blossoming, I guess you could say, of people who had been hospitalized for a long, long time. Looking back in time, the Babcock Building was just a small part in a bigger history of helping the mentally ill in South Carolina. Looking forward, the apartments in the Babcock building are expected to open in late 2021 with about 200 units. Clacken Properties specializes in historic renovation, something that takes a lot longer and jumping through many different hoops to accomplish. Everything that they're doing is really to preserve the history and reuse the building in a way that we can, um, you know, can be 
used in the modern era, um, but is really saving all the historical features of that site. For Carolina Insider, I'm Leah Kasmarak. Thanks, Leah. That's it for this edition of Carolina Insider, a student production here in the Kennedy Greenhouse Studio in the School of Journalism and Mass Communications. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you back here on Wednesday.